Now welcome one of our dearest friends who's a wonderful minister. She and her husband have a great church in New Jersey. She travels around the world ministering on deliverance. Welcome Trisha Roselli. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to be here. Thank you, Chuck, for the invitation and Pam and all the team here. I'm really honored to be here. I'm really excited about this meeting because had it not been for Jesus on my side, I don't know that I'd be alive right now. And, and you know, the Lord is getting us ready. These meetings are so important because he's raising up a remnant army. He's raising up an army that knows who they are and are willing to take a stand for what's right and decree that thing and cause a shift. And that's why we need to know about deliverance. That's why we need to know about who we are and how to continually to learn how to walk in our freedom. And um, so one of the scriptures that the Lord uh, has, has, has had me meditate on is in Joel chapter 3, 1. And it says, for behold, in those days and at that time, I shall reverse captivity and restore fortunes. And that's what the Lord is preparing us for. He is reversing the curses that have been in our lives. And he is restoring your fortunes. Do you believe that? He is reversing our curses and restoring our fortunes. Now, the captivity that I had experienced in my life, I never thought I could get free from. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I was in a pit. I was in a place of, of total defeat. And I really didn't want to have anything to do with the Lord. My father was, um, you know, we were raised Catholic and never really went to church or only on holidays. Didn't really understand anything about God. We thought we were the church but never read the Bible. <laughs> and, um, but my father had an encounter with the Lord. And my father started to minister to us about Jesus. And um, my father had gotten ill. He had died uh, at an early age from asbestos um, from the company he worked for. And there was just a lot of issues that took place with that. And um, right before my dad died, he grabbed my hand. And he said to me, God's going to use you. And, and he started to prophesy over me, and I was crying, and I was trying to pull my hand away from him, and I ran, and I never saw him again. Three days later, he died. So with that, I decided I didn't want any part of God. And I said, if that's the God you serve, I don't want any part of him. So I went in my room, and I knelt down, and I said to God, you I hate. And I said, but Satan, I'd rather serve you, and I welcome you into my life. Now, how many of you know that's pretty stupid? <laughs> that, that's what I did. So you can imagine from that point on, my life spiraled. Do you think I had a problem beforehand? Well, he's not a good God. He's not a good God. We serve the great God, a God of the, the great I am who's good, who loves us, and who's merciful forever. So I went into a very bad place. I wasn't exactly a model citizen. I, 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 because of all the anger, and there was a lot of stuff that took place in my life, like many of you, I, I was very rebellious. And um, I wasn't listening to you. I didn't care who you were. I wasn't listening to you, which how many of you know that's stupid. So we're going to break. We're going to break and come out of agreement and alignment with rebellion. And... Um, so what happened was I worked for the airlines and a lot of people were ministering to me about Jesus and I really, you know, I was like, speak to the hand. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about him. I'm an atheist. But I was listening. I was watching. I wanted to see if they had something that I was craving for. I wanted, I wanted something because I thought more about dying than I did about living. I did not have hope for anything. And I understand suicide and the severity of that and how serious it is. I thought more, I tried. I wanted to die. I did not want to live. And as they started to talk to me about the Lord, I listened, gave them a hard time, but I listened. And there was a day that I, I was about to have a nervous breakdown. My mother had a nervous breakdown. My sisters got divorced. I mean, everything that, that could have gone wrong went wrong after my dad died. And... Um, I thought, well, what do I have to lose? And I prayed, you know, and at that time when I worked for the airlines, everybody, not everybody, pretty much all of us were partying, getting high, and, 
and I had an issue with cocaine. And I prayed. The woman who always ministered to me was preaching. She would always say to uh, preach uh, John 10, 10, the thief comes, but the seal kill and destroy. But I've come to give you life more abundantly. Well, I can assure you I didn't have an abundant life. And I prayed, and I said, God, I'm gonna, I'm, if you're real, I'm going to give you one year. And I'm going to see what you can do for me. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going back to my old lifestyle. I said, but don't take my abundant life as cocaine. And that's my desire. Now, why I say that is how God is so merciful. You know, when Chad shared his testimony about how God, you know, he rescued Chad. He went after him. God didn't care. He met me where I was at. I mean, he probably wanted to smack me. But he met me where I was at where I was just so belligerent with my attitude. I just had no hope, and I said, I'll give you one year. Now, I didn't know where Born Again's went to church. <laughs> I never heard of Born Again. So I just knew that, well, I said, well, I'll read the Bible. And people bought me a Bible. I didn't attend service. I didn't attend church. I actually backslid when I got to church. But anyway, that's a separate story. But when I, when I, when I started to read the Bible, I started to believe the Word of God. And I devoured the word. Amen. I mean, I devoured the word. And I started to read it. And I would look at people and say, well, this book says that if I pray for you, you'll get healed. And I would say, come on, let's just pray. And I would pray for people. And we started to have revival in the airlines. People started to get healed. They, I saw demons on people. I had no grit for any of this. People would fall out under the power of the Lord. I thought they passed out. So I didn't know. I never saw anything like this. So God started really moving. And, and, and it was for like about a good two years. I did not attend a church, but, but I devoured the word. And the Lord started to really break through in my life. And, you know, in, in the book of Romans uh, chapter 12, and, I'm, and I know Chuck read it the other day, but I want to read it again out of the Amplified. And I think that's what he read it out of. And it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, um, intelligent act of worship. Don't be conformed to the world any longer with its super superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed. See, it's a process as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focus on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is and that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan. So God wanted me to change from one form into another. He wanted to renovate. That's what that word renew means, to renovate my life, renovate my mindsets. Now, I had no clue how to do this. I didn't know that God wants to supernaturally reverse things in my life. But I, I yielded to the Lord because I was so desperate. I didn't care if I lived or died. I said, God, if you're real, if you can do this, if you can shift my life and cause deliverance to take place, and I'm in because I can't go on any longer. That's why these meetings are so important. Curses are real. Deliverance is real. I thank God for the blood of Jesus that set me free because I promise you I would not be alive right now. <laughs> 